I've always found light fastness to be an interesting subject, but I think you need to understand a little bit about pigments and dyes to understand what light fastness means. So let's investigate that a little bit. When you look at the Liquitex range of colors, almost every single color we have is pigment based, except for fluorescent colors, which are dye based. So what does that mean to you as a, as a painter, as an artist? Uh, to talk about dyes, I want you to think back to childhood. And in school, you know, when we were in kindergarten, first grade maybe, we made art pieces often out of construction paper, that colored paper. And do you remember we would hang those on the refrigerator, you put a magnet on there, mom or dad's proud of that. The sunlight comes in the window and it hits that. And after a while, when you remove that magnet, you'd see that it's still a dark area of color there, but the rest of it has faded. That's because that was dye based. So when we think about pigments and dyes, I want you to kind of keep this in mind. If we think about a pigment and a dye in size, Think of a pigment like being the size of a football, as opposed to a dye being like the, the head of a pin, the head of a needle, something like that. And, and also think about it this way. If we took a dye and, and, and have that, that's soluble in, in some sort of fluid. So I want you to think about like salt, like a grain of salt or a, or a tablespoon of salt. You dump that in water and it dissolves and it becomes part of that, that liquid. Now think about a pigment as a rock and dropping that in water. It's not gonna dissolve, it's gonna be surrounded by that, just like we have a, a medium, acrylic polymer and acrylics surrounding a pigment or oil in oil paint or gum arabic in watercolor paint. So pigments and dyes, two different things. And pigments can much better withstand the assault of UV rays and dyes cannot. So let's take a look at what happens in our lab. So, First thing I want to show you is, again, just to, uh, just to reiterate this, this is ultramarine blue, and our label, our color index number says PB, pigment blue, 29, that's ultramarine blue. So that's pigment based. Now, if we look at something like this, this happens to be the soft body range, and this is fluorescent orange. If we look here, we don't have a color index number. It says NR, not rated. So it's not rated for light fastness, it doesn't have pigment information because that will not be able to withstand the assault of UV rays over time. And, and let's go back one more time to the ultramarine blue. Here we've got this little symbol that looks like the sun and we have the Roman numeral one in there. And that tells us that that's a very light fast color. We'll get into more specifics of that in a second. But let's move over here and take a look at these two examples. So when our chemists are working in the lab, they will take colors and they will put swatches of color down and this extends all the way over, but they cover one half with a piece of paper like this. And they also put this test sheet in here. This is called the blue wool scale. And it's eight various pieces of wool that are dyed or fabric that are dyed with blues that are known to fade at a specific rate. So they put both of these things in a machine and it's, it's, it's a xenon chamber. It's called the Q-Sun machine. And it uses these xenon arc lamps to blast it with UV light. And it approximates the light coming through a window in your home in normal daylight conditions. So they do this for 300 hours. And let's take a look at what happens when we reveal this. Here, these are all pigment-based colors. So we see there's no change from one side to the other, but this is a fluorescent color. And you can see that's a dramatic change, an absolute dramatic change. And they take the blue wool test out as well. And let's take a look at that too. You see listed one through eight right here. And if you look down here at eight, you see there's no change at all. You, you can probably see that there's hardly any change. You see a little bit of change here, a little bit more. And your blue jeans would fall in uh, to around the number four or number five on the blue wool scale. Look up here at one. This is faded dramatically just like the fluorescent color. So they use this as a comparison. And when we have a color that's been put in the xenon chamber, hit with UV light for 300 hours, it's approximating 100 years of light passing through a window in your home and, and hitting an image, hitting a picture. So we want to have colors that mimic a number eight on the blue wool scale. And when we have that, that's when we come back to a situation like this and we look at our ultramarine blue again and we look at the light fastness rating of one. That means in 100 years, that's not going to change over time. And I wanna show you one more example. This is a homemade example. So I didn't have a fancy uh, machine like our chemists have in the lab. I took a fluorescent orange, I painted this board, covered half, and I'll show you on the back beforehand. I uh, 
I put this in 12 hours of direct sunlight right outside my studio on the blacktop in July. So very, very strong light. And take a look. That's a dramatic difference in 12 hours. So obviously that's not being filtered by light coming through a window in your home. Uh, it's being hit directly. So that's, that's a dramatic acceleration of what can happen. So how is all of this useful to you as an artist? I don't want anybody to think that if they're using fluorescent colors, you know, this situation is gonna happen if things are hanging in your home and not in direct sunlight all the time. Uh, because fluorescent colors can be quite fun to use, but if you're using them, and you have a picture and you're gonna hang it up or you, you sell a picture and, and it's using fluorescent colors, make sure that somebody knows to put that in an area where light is not gonna hit that. And, and the last part I'll leave you with is that you recognize this even in your own homes. Sometimes a, a, a fabric chair or a sofa might have a situation where light has been hitting one arm of that, coming through the window and hitting that. And you'll notice that's faded much more or, or totally different than the other end of the sofa that's totally out of the light. So. The key here is there's a lot of great information on your tubes and your jars of paint and they can really help you out in the long run if you take time to learn what they mean.